John, I might have you stumped this week. It's okay. Let me bring up the, you know. You don't get to cheat. The Western Wanderers page again. Hey, you I have my... to cheat. John, I have my tote all ready to fact check. Oh, thank you, Mason. I'm proud of you to having, you know, my back on this because Jessa does not know these fact checkers a whole lot. Track Packer Podcast. I'm with your host, Mason Eisen Zimmer and John Breckel of John Breckel Announcing LLC and Becca Pelkey of Becca Pelkey Reba Speed Walking, whatever we want to call her. And I'm Jessa Pelkey of Dakota Speedway TV and Dakota Dirt. Mason. I hate that intro. And Let's your aunt is calling this. me. Oh, your aunt is. Oh, Terry well, Zup. Do you that. ask her what's up? Yep. You better yeah, ask. What's up? Well, how is everyone doing? It's a little bit uh, moist outside. Mason is loving it. Mason has started a rain tsunami across the Midwest. No track is safe. I think our farmers. Thank you, Mason. Yes. Farmers are very happy with Mason right now. Yeah. In about a couple of weeks, they're not going to be very happy with no. Mason because they want to get their crops in the field. And yeah. Mason's not allowing for that. So, um, but as of right now, they are quite happy with Mason because it's allowing the ground to have some moisture in it before they can plant and seed. However, Mason, you need to turn that off pretty soon. I will say it's racing everything's season pretty now. green right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's racing uh, season. It's gotten a little excessive, I would say, in the last few days. Aye, aye, aye. I will also say the folks probably down in like Iowa and Nebraska probably don't need any more moisture. No, <laughs> they don't need any more storms either. Yeah. Yeah. Let's it's, been start a, it's been an interesting week weather-wise. And so haven't had much racing to talk about, but hopefully this week maybe we get some glimpse of the racing season. As always, we've got to thank our presenting sponsor, Hitch Harness, for the support of the Track Packers podcast. And happy birthday to our very own Tyler Hall, turns 31 today. Thank you so much for supporting us on the podcast. This is a good time of year, especially now that people are getting out and about working in the fields, working on outdoor projects. Check out HitchHarness.com or all their products. Check out the Hitch Harness, whatever style fits your needs, single, double style Hitch Harness. Also, products for the racers as well. Be sure to check it out. Get a hold of Tyler if you have any questions. And thank you so much once again for supporting us on the podcast. So the lineup from last week is the same with the addition of John. Since he missed a week, he is now relegated to the back of the pack. And so it's still Miss Becca Pelkey on the pool, followed by myself, Jessup, and John. So Miss Becca, how are you doing this week? I am good. Uh, unfortunately, we had to cancel last week's Mandan Meltdown at the Dakota Speedway, but uh Fingers crossed, uh, Mother Nature turns things around. Unfortunately, it's not looking the greatest, but you never know that things might warm up and, and dry out. But uh, I, I'm not overly optimistic, but I'm trying to keep that optimistic uh, mind frame uh, that we can go racing this Friday. So fingers crossed, but otherwise, uh, this goes back to what we were just chatting about. The rain is good for the farmers. So, yeah. Yeah, from what I've seen, it's a little muddy for them to get on the field right now and get started. So hopefully they get a little bit of dry weather coming up in the next few days or week. Mr. Jesse Pelkey, how are you doing? Well, we're doing, Mason. The school year can't come to an end soon enough. 
so we can focus mainly on more important things such as racing, sleep, racing, and not booger flicking kids. No, the baby. You got to focus on your baby pretty soon. Oh, yeah, that's coming. That'll be at the end of the year. I don't have to worry about that until then. I think Becca's got the sleep part covered. Yep. She's sleeping for three of us. Because I don't get to sleep. Someone's got to make up for it. Did she kick you out of the bed? Yeah. That makes more sense. Her and the dog dog kicked me up, but I took the pregnancy pillow. That's mine now. (laughs) I'm proud of you. That, that's it's, like the main attraction for the dog now. <laughs> yeah, the dog loves the pregnancy pillow. That's that's his deal. But since I I don't get my bed, I don't get I don't get anything, Mason. I'm just barely I, surviving. I don't, I don't need the sleep. pregnancy pillow yet. So I, I, if Jessup needs it and it helps him sleep, by all means, he can have it until I need it. But as of right now, I'm doing good. Excellent. We weren't asking you, Becca. We were asking me. <laughs> will you continue to enjoy your pregnancy pill, okay, Jessup? I will, Mason. Thank you. John, we missed you last week. How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing good. It's good to be back. Um, Vegas was a lot of fun. Nationals were a lot of fun. Bowled well. Had a great time down there. Um, went to a show, went to a movie, and uh, and did a lot of a uh, lot of side tournaments. So, yeah, so it was a lot of fun down in Vegas. Weather was beautiful down there. It was 90 degrees um, the first couple of days when we got there. And then after that, it was basically in the mid to um, to upper 80s. So super nice weather when we were down in Vegas. A um, little bit of rain on Friday, which surprise it rained in Bismarck on Friday as well. But uh, but besides that, um, everything else was um was pretty good. So, but it's good to be back. Um, I am getting excited enough for racing season as uh, bowling season has kind of winded down. We've only got a couple things left here for the year, and um and then it's full blown into into the race season. So hopefully we can start start someplace this weekend a little bit here to um to partake in a, in a season opener. Well, and the question I have for you for in regards to Vegas, did you check to make sure that the scoring pylon was still there at the race? Yes, track? the scoring pylon is still there, so that is a good thing. So that has not gone anywhere. Um since you know since the last time and um and the other good thing was as well is that i made sure to keep it in check so i didn't have any wild people walking around trying to you know kidnap it um like uh like somebody maybe in a you know red shirt that's uh that's above me on this lineup you have to keep yeah, an eye out for those people why i would kidnap anyone i already have enough people in my life Maybe you wanted to have somebody to partake in the pregnancy pillow with. I have Gordy. I say Gordy will definitely keep him company on that pregnancy pill. That's for sure. It is. Comfy. Speaking of which, that is that. Speaking of which, that is where Gordy is right now. I just checked on him. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. Uh, I'm doing well myself. Uh, had the extra weekend to prepare for racing season coming up. So pretty much ready to go. Just waiting for some place to open up nearby. I'm not super ambitious to travel four or five hours one direction, as shocking as I, that may sound to people. But uh, would like to keep things a little closer to home until racing season fully starts up. And so if this is your first time checking out the Track Packer podcast. Be sure to like and follow our Facebook page, the Track Packers podcast. Greatly appreciate the support. Feel free to share, comment, give us a like on each one of the videos, Spotify, Google, and Apple. If you like to listen to us on the road or just in podcast form, that's always appreciated too. So with that, it's time to officially wave the green flag for episode seven of season three. And who are what are we repping? And Miss Becca, you get to start us off once again. So I made a discovery before tonight's uh, podcast. Um, I still fit into youth mediums. And I don't know how much longer I can do that. But uh, so I had to take advantage of this driver's T-shirt while I still can fit into them. So this weekend, I am repping the Weekend Warrior Ricky Alvarado out of Hotchkiss, Colorado. So this is the front of the shirt. And then on that. And uh, Ricky actually picked up a victory a few weeks ago down at the Boone Speedway on April 13th. So I uh, already got a win on the season for Ricky Alvarado and hope to see him back on the Dakota Classic Modified Tour later this summer. 
So how did you come across that shirt? Have you had, is that a shirt from last year or? Uh, he actually gave a few t-shirts out to be given away at Dakota Speedway the week before the tour. And this was one of the shirts that did not uh, get given away. So uh, I kind of commandeered it. Oh, there you go. Those darn tour announcers. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it was meant to be given out the week before the or the Friday before the tour when he was at the track. Uh, those darn announcers <laughs> didn't uh, think of a trivia question or something to uh, give it away to one lucky kid, but uh, still fits me. That's when they have like a set of like 10 questions and they only ask like nine of them. It's like, oh, shoot, we didn't ask all of our questions. Who knows the answer to this? Ooh, I do my shirt. Perks of being a worker at the track or a volunteer at the track. Sometimes you get some cool stuff like that. So awesome shirt. I'll go next. Repping the birthday boy, Tyler Hall, for the hat. For the koozie this week, dug into the random batch of koozies that I have. I have an old Jason Berg Lightning Sprint koozie, number 100. I don't know if he's going to be racing as much this year, considering he, he runs the Buffalo River Speedway, and I think he's got someone else running his car for the 2024 season. So we'll see what his racing adventures look like this year. And for the shirt or the sweatshirt this week, I am actually providing a sneak peek for some new Dirt Race Central Street Stock Tour merchandise. And so I believe we're going to have multiple colors of these sweatshirts that will be coming out and being released very soon as the tour is going to be starting up in just about a month for a double header over the Viking Speedway. So that is who or what I am repping for this episode. Mr. Jessup Pelkey, you are next. Well, Mason, I am wrapping a traditional, original IMCA TV collared shirt. Business as usual, as we are wrapping up for business again with DSTV, which is an affiliate of IMCA TV. And we're looking forward to another exciting year. Hopefully, uh, we get going within the next six months. But... The second thing I'm wrapping is an old Arnie Ranta Motorsports hat. John, you look perplexed. Mm. You had a look of perplexion there. Do you know the drivers who've raced under Arnie Ranta? I'm I'm just impressed that you were able to read that hat without taking it off. That is hard sometimes, but um, just pulled this out of the closet. Uh, Arnie is... Um, well, he was a longtime supporter of dirt track racing, and, you know, uh, he gave the starts to a lot of local uh, Midwest late model drivers. Um, if you think about it, who, let's see, there's Terry Casey, legendary driver of our area. And then you had um, uh, Brent Larson, the B1 bar bomber, he, he helped him out a lot with, and then... Um, Who's the 77? Jordan Yagi. Jordan Yagi, he helped with. Mm -hmm. And then he helped somebody else, and I can't think of I think it was Jason Rome. So pretty interesting guy. And a you know, great guy for our sport. So that's all that can be said. Didn't they have like a Hall of Fame ceremony last year or something for Arnie? I can't remember which track or which uh, Hall of Fame. I can't. I don't know if it was a National Hall of Fame or what, but I feel like I remember seeing a lot of his name come up last spring or last summer for some sort of ceremony. Let us take a quick look, Mason. Arnie Ranta, dirt on dirt. Supporter died last year. Sad deal. Uh, let's take a look here. From Stillwater, Minnesota, according to Dirt on Dirt. Pop this open just a little more. Uh, Northeast, the, let's see, financial involvement in 2001 with a $500 sponsorship he gave to a friend at the local level. He covered Terry Casey, uh, Jordan Yagi, so sponsored drivers as Dan Schleiper of Oak Creek, Wisconsin, Jordan Yagi, Brian Shirley, Brent Larson, uh yeah, those are some of the bigger ones. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 
during the heyday of the Nelson Provenzino era. He had a year with Provenzino. I think he had a cup of coffee with that team. Um, and then wanted to step away from the shenanigans that were taking place. And yeah. Nice. A little trip down history lane and definitely seen that that logo or that name on several cars over the last few, several years. And so awesome. Yep. 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 Good deal. Well, that leaves Mr. John Brickle for who are, what are you repping? Okay. So for me, I have decided to go Minnesota route this, uh, this episode as well. So I am repping a 17th annual Minnesota mod national shirt. that has all their sponsors on the front. On the back, they have got Sabraski and Jody Belfias car on the back of it with all of the previous champions. So I am repping that here for the episode of the Track Packers podcast. Where did you come up with that shirt? Was that, did you get that in Proctor? Oh, no. I did not get this in Proctor. You probably got it at one of the t shirt signs, say at sites. I did. Oh, I guess it was right on that. Yep, he is 100% right. That makes so, sense. It's an FYE event. My size and everything, and it's a very nice shirt. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, because I'm like, well, you haven't been, I don't think you've been to that event, but. I'm everywhere, Mason, just all the time. Right. Interesting. Well, cool shirt. That is who or what we were repping for this episode. Give a shout out to. Our good friend Isaac Hot Sauce Sandro with the Hot Sauce Hot Memory Rewind. He is one of those farmers in the dirt racing community, and I've seen some snaps. He's like, well, can't get in the field yet, so I guess he's all set to go for racing season. So hopefully that means he'll be at the racetrack to start this upcoming weekend. And so visit him in the pits, his crew, Get check out the Sandro Snack Shot, the upgraded Sandro Snack Shack for 2024. And thank you once again, Isaac, for supporting us on the podcast. Before you start, Jessup, I want to show you my hero card from last week, vindicating my guess of Chad Corbett. I told you I had one of these cards. I remember Chad back in his uh, Superstock days when he used to be in the yellow and black 21 Superstock. Used to really <laughs> like that paint scheme that used to have on his car back in the 2005-2006 era. Nice. What you right. got for us this week, Jessup? Well, we I'm got, ready with my with my sight. We got a couple one here, John. I, I they might be easy, they might be a little hard. Uh, we're gonna go with the first one here. You remember, you gotta try to get the year for these. They're all gonna be from the same year. Try to get the driver, and yeah, two big things here. Ready? Here's number one. Ooh. Is that Tony Barr? It in the is. You got one. And let's see, what year would that be? That honestly looks like about a 2003 era. Don, you might be onto something there. <laughs> ready for number two? I'm ready. All right. This one's going to be a tricky one. Let's see if we can get the leg off. Justin Fagers? Two for two. Couldn't get him mixed up with Marshall there. And saw Justin comes... win the uh, Science Memorial the first year we went. Here comes the, the really tricky one. Uh, that is Leon Plank. Three for three. Hot dang, John. Not bad. That... I... So, so that would be that year. Was that two thousand four? No, so that might have been two thousand four, right? Two thousand three. Okay. The reason why I bring that up is because I remember that John Canta wrecked his car yep. when they were running the Challenge Series one year, and he actually ran Leon's car over in Jamestown that night when the Challenge Series was over in Jamestown, and that was back in two thousand and four. That was for when he um, ended up doing that because of the fact of the matter that he won the Challenge Series title that year um, going through and um, and basically picking up the championship. And he had to run the car because his car was was like no go for uh, for that night over in Jamestown. And 
geometry is that that year was midweek so it used to be midweek races as well so i think it was like on a thursday it was a wednesday or thursday when they were over in jamestown that was pretty good john i i thought i had some sneaky little Look cards there that i didn't even need the the site to help the western wanderer website that you well, were... I, thought yeah, was, I thought they would have been a little challenging because fagers and his brother ran very similar looking cars and this is true it's easy to get but, Fager, but fagers was always 15 the yep. f15 and marshall was always the f19 yes john and I then say I, that thought the, I thought the canta one or the plank one would, would have got you mixed up with the 85 with the blue and the the yellow i thought might have been able to get you guys kind of confused and off the trail a bit that was the only one i didn't really know i knew the figures and the qq bar because tony's had that number for however many Perhaps. years many it's many a years legendary yeah. number for with yeah. soda racing yeah mm -hmm. Nice. There you have it. Three for three. See if we can continue that streak. And even the right year. I mean, John did hit the tonight. right year too. He... John gets an attaboy. So does he get a cracker too, like I did earlier? Good job. You can get a chicken and a bite cracker. Awesome. I was patting myself on the back. Good job. Don't hurt yourself, John. That's your <laughs> voice is almost done. That's your That's his announcing yeah. hand. Does he point at things when he's announcing or what? They're over there. The Look, there's a wreck. There. I think it was the race. Jessup came out to Dakota Speedway for the very first time. And that was like Jessup's very first time hearing me announce. Yep. And apparently there was a wreck down in corners one and two. But I didn't say, oh, no, there's a wreck down in corners one and two. Apparently, I said something along the lines of like, oh, no, John, look, a wreck. And I point with my actual <laughs> finger. Yes. There's a wreck over there. Look, and look, there's a wreck. And I was like, where, Becca? Where's the wreck at? Over there. <laughs> no, that's Becca. Look, Becca everyone, at my announcing hand. It's I am there. pointing over there. Where, Becca? Is everybody supposed to turn around and look at you? Over there. I will say I'm looking forward to the next time I announce with John because I want to have the opportunity when he's announcing to just randomly just blurt out of like nowhere, just like wreck and turn three. And he'll just be like, what the heck? That's how they do it on MRN and PRN radio when they do the NASCAR races. The, the whoever's true. announcing the corner and the, the, the side by side action, if there's a caution and a pause, that's that's the how they know to stop talking and I'll let the, the corner person, whoever that happens in front of, Say call that wreck and and whatnot. So meanwhile, I actually Becca did... would be going off with caution. I actually did that one over in... there in Mandan, and I think it threw John off, and it didn't really work out that well because he just kept talking. <laughs> I did. I'm pretty sure I just muted her, and I was like, "That's nice, Becca," and we just kept moving on to the other other area of the race. See, I would love to see the reaction of the cameraman when all of a sudden you just yell caution in turn three when he's in the opposite part of the track. It'll just be like, <gasps> yeah, here's me. It goes crazy. Huh? As the camera shoots off the corner. Yes. And then there's nothing over there in three. I mean, two. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, it's actually by the flex stand. Yeah. It'll be entertaining. See, see how it goes this year. Good work, Jessup, on the uh, hot sauce, hot memory rewind for this week. Not much for a track pack report because there's been very little. Well, actually, there hasn't been any official racing. We did have one more test in tune over at the Red River Valley Speedway. I got to check that out. I think they had about between 70 and 80 cars there. So pretty good turnout, especially on a Thursday night. So it was really windy. Like, it was, thankfully. North Dakota? It, no. Yeah. No. It was super windy. Was like breezy and breezy. it's like one night where it was like acceptable for the wind to go right into the stands because that's the direction it was going and there's only like six seven people in the stands watching practice so i was like this is the night to have the wind go that direction um now, if you're one of those six or seven people just remember yeah. mason doesn't care about you yeah we were so sorry for those people that are in the grandstands that mason's like you know what who cares yep john back and <laughs> we don't i care. all we worry about your physical well-being 
your yes. cardio, you make sure you cleared all that dirt out of your lungs and out of your nostrils. We need you to be breathing at 100% or at least to your full capabilities. We do not want to lose you guys. <laughs> well, to the seven people that were in the grandstands at the Red River Valley Speedway for Test and Tune, I apologize. I do care about you. This bud's for you, mister. I sit in the freezing cold grandstand and get pelted with dirt in my face. You are our real men and women of genius. Yeah, we're, we're not like Mason who can just go. Heroes. Dirt track. We're not like Mason who can just go into a tower whenever he wants to take yeah. cover. Well, you and Becca are. Not every track has a tower, tower, though. Yes, it does. That's a caution on. It's a caution this is actually a caution Mason. on Mason. I will actually give this to Mason for a caution. I feel like I could think of a track that doesn't actually have a tower. It might take me a while. No, we're saying, we're saying for the Red River one. You just said there what? wasn't a caution. Uh, Nick Hulford announces from the grandstands. There's still a tower. There's still in a tower Underwood. in Underwood. Yes, yes, there is. That's I not couldn't go I'm in the disputing. tower in Red River Valley Speedway this last week. For one, I was not on that side of the track. Two, I don't believe it was unlocked. It was unlocked because well, well, well. Corey Litton was there. And he's well, well, well. Look at that. Another we question know. on Mason. And with that, John. I have officially gone to the front of the pack. Corey Litton sent me Snapchats of him being in the tower and playing music. Mason gets the black flag for his second caution. This is only one caution, sir. Nope, nope, nope. There's two there. Why does John? Becca get a caution? <laughs> I stated a fact. Nick Holberg announced from the grandstands at McLean County Speedway. I say that's a well, fact. Becca does get a Becca does get a caution as well because implying that McLean County does not have a tower, and they do. She never implied that they never had a tower. All I said was Nick Holberg announced from the grandstands. If I think of a think... track that doesn't have a tower, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, hard part about it is Mason is that usually every track. Does does have a tower of some sort, even if it's out in the Question. open, it's still considered to be a tower. Does Tri County Speedway in Wishick have a tower? Because the announcer actually announces. Yes, they do. Down. Yes, yeah, they because do. where's their uh, my race pass? Scores are up in the tower in corner one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. yep, yep. Which is very nicely insulated. It is with spray foam. Usually, when I think of a tower, I think of like a more straight up tall structure. Versus like, so John. Know, versus like a long suite of, you know, rooms. Unfortunately, now Mason's defending racetracks because not every single track has the money and the ability to form an enclosed big tower on that. So, you know, usually they just have a location where they put their officials and have their trackside officials on, so oh, they can at least you know do their timing and scoring as need be. Mason, Mason, Mason. So Becca and Mason are at the back of the field. No, just I'm at the back. Becca got caught up in my wreckage. <laughs> this well, is true. This is, Mason this, was like I slowed down to avoid John, Mason. John, is this, yes. is this like the yes. national traveling circuits where the no fault cautions have you get this is like super nationals. If you stop, well, you go to the back. back. Becca missed it though. She kind of went around it. She did not pull a Haley Deegan or Danica Patrick and just run into everybody when they're under caution. So, mm -hmm. so she completely missed that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Becca, you should get to stay, lead the pack to the green flag again. Thank you. Anyways, I just had a couple little tidbits. You're from... in the back, Mason. You don't lead the pack to the green flag. Mason, as the well, leader, would like me to defer to you? That is a Yes, thank you. I just had a few tidbits from Tested Tune. It was cool to see Ty Wilkie in the pits. He's actually racing his legend a lot more this year. So it's going to be doing. Saw that. that. Yeah, it's going to be doing be double cool. duty again with us. Uh, hmm. He saw his 305 spring car. He didn't have it out. He just had his legend, but uh, looked pretty, pretty sporty in the legend. Didn't look like he had lost a step, but he was saying it's tough to get used to going from a legend to a spring car. And so I'm sure he'll have a little bit of growing pains, kind of getting used to that from week to week. I don't know how much he's going to race both of them on the same night, but sounds of it. Looking to do double duty this year. I think it's Mike Anderson that was in the 18A. I'm pretty sure it's a Gen X late model. And uh, so that's, that's a new new transition for Mike Anderson, who's been racing a stock car for the last several years. And so I'll be interested to see where he all decides to race this year. And then, of course, 
bunch of new legend drivers, bunch of I, I I have no idea who the heck they are. Like they have all different cars. Some of them aren't decaled or wrapped yet, so it's like who knows how who's all going to show up for opening night. They're scheduled to open this Friday, and so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of new faces. I know Tony Brockhouse is working with a bunch of them, so it's a good good crop of legend drivers over there as well. But that's just some of the notes from Test and Tune that I took away besides getting shots of all the new looking cars so we'll see who shows up on opening night of this friday which speaking of that transitioning over to our updated schedule for this week mr dakota dirt what's on tap in the state of north dakota rain okay so rain jessup, and more rain jessup you need to have a a you know a formal introduction here oh, so my bad, John. I'm mason sorry. tried last week he did an okay job but it was not to par so again race fans if you want everything North Dakota racing news, results, recaps, even weather forecasts, and maybe even some power rankings up coming here pretty soon, you need to check out Dakota Dirt. It is your one-stop shop. Again, one-stop shop for everything that you need to know from a racing perspective. So check them out. They are social on social media platforms as well as dakotadirt.org. And your one and only Jessa Pelkey will take it away now. I am Mr. Dakota Dirt. I'm here for you all. I give for the people. I am for the people. Vote for me this coming election. <laughs> Anyways, we are going to have another interesting weekend coming up. Um, a lot of it's honestly going to come down to what happens this week with Mother Nature. As Friday is looking like it's uh, going to be cold, kind of chilly. Could be windy. Not really sure what that's going to bring for racing on Friday night. Now, tracks that are going to be opening that Friday or racing. Well, technically, everyone's going to be opening this week. Uh, not ever this week, but whenever their next race is. Um, will be Dakota Speedway and Red River Valley Speedway. And the big thing, like I said, is going to come down to what the weather does. It needs to have some sort of heat to make anything truly feasible as it rained a lot today, which is Tuesday. And then Becca's rolling her eyes so like it did rain. Well, not everyone can live in the Bismarck bubble, Becca. So get over yourself. Love you, babe. <laughs> Anyways, um, North Dakota's getting hit pretty good with a lot of rain and a lot of cool weather. And there's not a lot actually drying out out here. So Mason's been making his rounds around the state and making sure it gets extra moist for those farmers. Now, Saturday, um, I do have to put one correction on the upcoming races section. It would will be Devil's Lake Speedway and the Estevan Motor Speedway. Our friends to the north look to get their season rocking along with our friends over at Devil's Lake Speedway. Again, um, it, a lot of it really comes down to what the weather is going to do. Saturday looks a little more promising than Friday. From what I've seen, it could have changed by now, but uh, it's literally one or two days hit or miss with rain. Uh, looking at a lot of the forecast. So uh, there's that as well. And Nodak Speedway looks to kick off their season on the 5th. So it's going to be a big weekend. So that's what we got on tap. Uh, next week, things are going to be a little more wide open uh, across the state. As uh, Dakota Speedway, Red River Valley and River Cities will all be opening on May 10th. And the 11th will be Devil's Lake and a test and tune over at Williston Basin, I believe. And then the 12th is Nodak as well. So, or no, Williston Basin was. I think Williston's actually week. racing that. Yep. Next. That's yep. that, the next week. Yeah, there's so many changes going on here, Mason. So There is, yeah. A lot of wait and see type of racing that we got going on here. A lot of it's going to come down to what old Mother Nature wants to let us do or not let us do. So that's what it's looking like. 
Well, and the big thing is too, especially it may not like necessarily rain on like that Friday or Saturday. Dry. Yeah, it's like if it's supposed to rain on Wednesday and Thursday, it's not going to help with like not being warm enough to dry out the track. Well, the greatest way you could kind of give an example of this for those who don't understand how this affects the track is take your laundry. You go and you dry, you get it all washed, right? And you just put it, lay it on the ground. And if it's 50 and humid, it's not going to dry. And the same goes for the dirt and the tracks. If it gets a bunch of rain throughout the week and there's not much for wind and it doesn't get any warmer and it stays relatively damp and humid throughout the days, track's not going to be workable in. And also you got to remember fans really don't want to sit in frigid temperatures. And this isn't like just cold. This is damp cold and damp cold sucks compared to dry cold. Yeah, I could see like being at the start of the season, maybe a little bit more like pushing to get things running. But again, it's not ideal. (laughs) See, I look at it the other way. I see it at the end of the season. It's more of an urgency to get the races in at the end of the year for multiple reasons compared to at the beginning of the season where drivers are antsy to race at the beginning of the season. Tracks can't afford to start in the red and lose a lot of money just for the sake of drivers wanting to get that itch scratched and out of the way. Because come June, there's plenty of times where we hear drivers state that they're already exhausted from the season and there's too much. So whereas at the end of the season, the those are the usual bigger races you get. Uh, it's kind of like the blanket for tracks to cover their expenses for the winter season and it's their big push to get enough funds in the bank to get through the winter for bills utilities and stuff like that and then also have enough to start up the upcoming year Mm -hmm. that's why at the end of the season uh, there's more of an urgency and a greater importance for them to get the race in compared to as the beginning of the season where it's just we want to get that itch scratch and we want the drivers to be happy yep definitely a tough balancing act to start the year especially too with unpleasant or not not ideal conditions but hopefully we get some racing around the state of north dakota this upcoming weekend there's a lot scheduled to take place in minnesota which i don't believe minnesota's actually had a race yet this year So it's been very slow going to start the year. Friday the 3rd, right now we have I-94, Fiesta City, and Ogilvy Raceway scheduled to open up, which uh, I-94 has a doubleheader Friday and Saturday. The Ogilvy Raceway has the IRA 410 sprint cars as part of their show, so that'll be a nice treat for them to kick off the season. Red Cedar Speedway in Minami is also opening on Friday. You move to Saturday, you have Cedar Lake. The Dakota State Fair Speedway in here on South Dakota running as well. North Central Speedway, Ogilvy with all the regular classes and Rice Lake Speedway. Sunday the 5th, we have Buffalo River opening up, Granite City Motor Park scheduled, and Casino Speedway with their car show and testing. Or not, not car show. Well, they have a car show. They're also scheduled, I believe, to race on Sunday. So hopefully there's some racing taking place somewhere this weekend. Fingers crossed, but we'll see. I know there's supposed to be a test and tune on Thursday in Fergus Falls. Based on the forecast, I'm not holding my breath for that. But who knows? Mother Nature can throw us a curveball too. So that is the upcoming race schedule for the first weekend of May. It's actually going to be May tomorrow, so that's kind of crazy to think about in itself. We'll give a shout out as we throw the white flag to the real deal. Brody Carlsrud in the B1 IMCA stock car. Got to see him out in Tessin Tune's got a really cool looking drive, driver's suit. Be sure to check him out in the pits. He's very excited to start the season off. You can check out his podcast, The Real Deal with B1, where he'll be talking about his racing, kind of his adventures throughout the summer. And so thank you, Brody, for joining us on the Track Packers podcast as well. Any latest and greatest paint schemes that we've seen over the last week or two? John, you missed a week. So do you have any that stick out to you? 
So uh, it was just announced today, Tori Fisher's uh, throwback scheme was very cool mm -hmm. on her sport mod. Back to the days of, you know, Mitch Johnson running that scheme and Mike Johnson running that scheme, as well as Troy Olson, Matt Auckland, and, and a lot of those guys in the Johnson brothers as well. So, so yeah, so that one I think is really cool looking. Really liked that one that uh, that had come across. And then um, I was kind of looking through some some photos of, you know, kind of some upcoming car schemes that have been released here recently and everything else. And Mason, you shared it over yesterday. Um, Hidden Frankies is really, really, really nice, too. Really like his uh, his purple that he's got, uh, you know, kind of as a the main color scheme this year on his car. I think it looks really sweet. Nice. Those are definitely a couple cool ones. Yeah, I was I saw Tori's car at Tessin, too, and she didn't have any of the stickers or anything on it. And so I was like, I was curious. I'm like. I wonder if she's going with that red and white scheme. And I'm like, that's the first thing I thought of was that those throwback schemes and stuff. Same. Yep. Really cool Same. To see the finished product. The other I one that I really liked too okay. um, was uh, Tommy Nichols. Tommy Nichols Midwest Mod. Um, very sharp. Really like that car this year as well. It's also another good one too. Becca, what's a couple that stick out to you over last week? Um, I really like Luke Johnson from Sioux City, Iowa. He's got a, a really cool um, IMCA sport mod, uh, primarily with a white base, but also with some blue and black, uh, sorry, blue, black, and gray. Uh, it's, it's, it's a really nice transition between the colors before it gets to that white uh, base. And I think it just looks really sharp. Looks really nice on the track too. Um, I really liked Rob Van Mills IMCA stock car. Um, it's right on par for what his traditional look looks like, but it's just got a little different uh, feel to it. And I, I really like it. It's always a, a sharp looking car on the track, but uh, I really like that car this year. And then uh, I'm going to go down the NASCAR route because Darlington is coming up and that, that is traditionally NASCAR's throwback weekend. And uh, Kyle Larson announced his Terry Labonte throwback and it is a spot on uh throwback down to um obviously the sponsor's different but they actually use the kellogg's uh font for um the hendrickcars.com uh logo and everything so it's spot on really cool throwback uh tribute painting to terry labani and so uh, that'll be fun to see that on on the track because uh i've seen I've, i never was a nascar fan back in the early 90s and and whatnot but uh i've seen that car in a lot of highlight reels and so it'll be cool to see it on the track uh in the upcoming nascar race definitely a high candidate for throwback paint scheme in nascar this year for sure actually a lot of the pretty much all the hendrick cars have some really good schemes this year jessup any st schemes stick out to you over the last week uh brandon shepherd's 410 sprint car finally was finalized today that looks pretty sharp. I wish the tank, the gas tank on the tail um, would be blue instead of black, but it looks good overall. Great job by the Newman, uh, Jake Newman Motorsports team, and they uh, they did a nice job on it. Yeah, it's it's one thing to see it like in a drawing, kind of like, you know, animated or colored, but when you see it on the actual race car itself, it, it just... It just hits different, so I agree with you. That thing looks really yep. nice. Yep, that's about it. I I haven't had a lot of time to look at a, a bunch of different things, but uh, Jacobson's cars look pretty sweet with the gold throw in. It's another good one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'll just add two more. Um, I was kind of looking back through some of the photos from Test and Tune over in Man, and I actually like Trevor Sars Legend black and green a little, going a little bit different color this year kind of just something different that stands out a little bit more on the track and so i like that he varied it up a little bit and so you can definitely differentiate from the other cars and then uh ryan Urich's minimus mod number 34 up in langdon i think that's a really cool paint scheme really excited to see that one on the track as well he's been a little under the weather when i was talking to him last week or so and so he's uh hopefully going to make it to the season opener this upcoming week i think he had yeah, some rough sickness going on. So hopefully that's cleared out and that way he can get out to the track out in Devil's Lake. Any other any other rumors or anything you've heard leading up to the start of race season? Of course, Mother Nature, who knows what she's going to do for this upcoming weekend. I do want to throw an idea out to the crowd here, especially since we have two announcers here. So I don't know how closely you guys listen to the NASCAR on Fox broadcast, but I've been kind of paying attention to Kevin Harvick and 
he has like a podcast where they kind of give him a word to try to sneak in on the broadcast. I feel like we should start doing that here with Bazinga. John and Becca, potentially. It should be Bazinga. Got to start thinking of some uh, clever words. Like this last week, it was yeet. It should be wampus. It was a very uh, forceful yeet that he forced into the broadcast he when did. he dropped it that. And great. like, what? Yeah, he yeeted it into the broadcast, so to speak. Yep. <laughs> so considering you guys are announcing potentially this upcoming Friday, what would be a good word to kind of try to sneak into the broadcast for the first week? Hmm. How? I feel like it has to come from you guys because if how 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 or pow kapow kapow, kapow like carnage like cars kapow. I could I could but use she, that one in any type of I sense. I feel so. like John will probably actually start using that if we're not careful. <laughs> That's the funny part I is I know John will so start much. using these words. Uh, mm. I know jo uh, Jessup had a good word with Bazinga. I would love to hear John try to sneak in Bazinga at some point during the broadcast. You know for a fact I will get it in there someplace. Oh, I know. I just want to see how you do it. <laughs> I wonder the how many people class the legend class has, oh my gosh, Bazinga over the last couple of years. Wow. I feel like there's going to be a handful of people that 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 know John well enough to turn around and be like, what is going on up there? Has he been drinking? Which obviously we know John doesn't drink, but uh, I feel like he'll have a few turnarounds in the stands. <laughs> Bonus points if you can fit it in too, Becca. Oh boy. I like a challenge. Oh boy, this might be interesting for Becca to try to fit it in. Because, are we, are we... I mean, hey, I do interview things. Hey, John, she'll go yeah, like, this. like this. Bazinga! She'll point. Bazinga! No, no. How? No. There's a wreck over there. I like so, a good challenge. Power Bazinga. Which one are they? Are they going to try to officially use for this week, Jessup? Well, let's go with Bazinga. Okay. <laughs> Game on. We're following the, the the lane of Kevin Harvick and see if we can sneak in funny words or quirky words into the announcing or broadcast. So if you're watching on Dakota Speedway TV, be sure to check out John and Becca, see if they can fit that word in somehow. We want to go with that or acreage. Acreage? What? Yeah. We'll, we'll have plenty of like opportunities throughout the summer. So the season has start hasn't started yet. There's oh gosh. I could even over here like term, what is that one even? Uh all right. Oh, I already know how I'd use acreage. That, that, yeah, I, I do too. I have a great, great comment for it already. We're going to need to run flag this moment. <laughs> well, before we get off track with any more quirky words, be sure to check us out next week on the Track Packers podcast to come up with another quirky word for the announcing duo here. And so that'll do it for episode seven of season three. Be sure to like, share, and comment as always on the podcast. We greatly appreciate it. Spotify, Google, and Apple in the podcasting form. And be sure to leave us a five star review. Thank you to our sponsors, Hitch Harness, Brody Carlsrud, The Real Deal with B1, and Hot Sauce Isaac Sandro. Hopefully Mother Nature cooperates this week, and we will see you out there packing the track.